Hello and welcome to an academy, the one-stop solution for an English medium civil services aspirant. Today, as part of our R Pass journey, we'll be discussing a very important topic for your prelims and mains examination, which is Buddhist architecture, specifically stupas, and in within caves we have chaityas and viharas. Now, I hope that you've been liking these sessions. We've discussed Vadnagar, we've discussed the Maratha military landscape, we've discussed the Ayodhya temple, and we've also tried to remember Chauri Chora as an important moment. And in this series, we've been trying to do topics which are generally relevant for your preparation. And in that, we add Buddhist architecture because it's a very important topic generally. You can get n number of questions in prelims and we have got previously also questions in the mains examination with regards to the stupas. So, what is the purpose of today's discussion? We will discuss three things. First, what is the context of rise of Buddhism? I'll try to give you a basic overview of that. Then, once we've covered that, we will talk about the stupas, what are the basic components and what are the things which you need to keep in mind. Some of the most important stupas, four of them, very, very important. And then we'll talk about what are called chaityas and viharas. What is the concept? A straightforward question has come in prelims previously about chaitya, viharas and stupas. So the first question is, what is the concept of Buddhism? Why did Buddhism emerge? So we know that in 6th century BC, which is called second urbanization, this is a very important period of social and economic churn and change. And what will happen is that with early Hinduism or Vedic Brahmanism, which is the earliest form of Hinduism, there will be a rising frustration. And that rising frustration will be of two basic Varnas, the Varna system coming out in the later Vedic period itself. The Vaishya community and the Kshatriya community, both will have their own problems in the way the 4-4 Varna system was working. The Vaishya community got a lot of wealth in the 6th century BC. However, it was not able to get social status, remained third in the rank of Varna itself. And the Kshatriyas, though had a lot of power, still were second to the Brahmins itself. And therefore, the rising frustration and anger with the Vedic Brahmanistic fold created the context in which the audience for new heterodox religions was ready and therefore Buddhism. The argument which Buddhism would give is that there was a lot of moral corruption, materialism, people were looking at sorrow, dukkha quite a lot and therefore it was very, very easy for them to argue that this frustration can also be added with moral corruption and therefore it is a recipe for a heterodox religion, a new path to salvation. All of them are obsessed with salvation, the concept that how will you get moksha and therefore Vedic Brahmanism would say ritualistic merit, sacrifices and rituals. On the other hand, Buddhism will come as an alternative path, the Ashtang Marg, the Eightfold Path of Buddha itself, Siddhartha becoming Buddha and thereafter the story of our discussion starts when Buddha dies in Kusinagar at the age of 80. So, when we talk about the rise of Buddhism, I have generically very simply established for you that it is the frustration of the Vaishya and the Kshatriya community with the Vedic Brahmanistic fold and over and above that the moral corruption, sorrow, the materialism because there's a lot of money which is generated because of the rise of external trade. It means that there is a lot of modal degeneration and that in turn con creates the context in which Buddhism was possible. This is the basic idea. This you should know. This is a static concept. Now, Buddha dies. Our story with regards to Buddhist architecture is very simple, straightforward till he is alive. But once Buddha dies, there is a need for the Sangha to make sure that Buddha and his teachings, Dhamma, or what we call as the Sangha and the larger monastic established, he has established, should not go away. Therefore, what they do is that they do two things. First is that there is architectural expression in the form of monuments. And the second one we already know are the councils. The first Buddhist council itself will produce the Vinay and the Sutta Pitak, which will basically talk about the rules and regulations and the teachings of Buddha. And by the third council, we will have the Abhidhamma Pitak, which is the philosophy. But we are more interested in the architectural expression. Now, this creates the context in which I can basically discuss the stupa concept with you. But before I do that, I'm again repeating what I said. What I said to you is that what is the context of rise of Buddhism? The rise of Buddhism as a religion comes in the 6th century BCE period, a period of churn, 
a period of a lot of social and economic development. The concept is Vedic Brahmanism divided the society into four, four Varna structure, the four Varna structure within which we have the Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra and the Vaishya and the Kshatriya community were becoming more and more frustrated by the fact that they were not, they were having a lot of wealth but not social status, they were a lot of power but not social status and therefore frustration. Frustration can then be added to moral corruption which would be Buddhist argument. Buddhism's argument which is basically that there was a lot of moral corruption, there was a lot of issues which were there and therefore we were the ones who came up with an alternative path. The, the Atriya Sachais which is the fact that there are four noble truths and the Ashtang Margi. But again that is of no purpose to us, that is the philosophy part of it. What are we more, more interested about is Buddha dying and thereafter, how does the Sangha react? Sangha reacts by basically architectural expression and the councils. Councils as I told you, first, second, third and fourth. First and third create books, second and fourth create splits. First is Vinay and Sutta Pitak and thereafter you have Abhidhamma in third and thereafter you have the first split into Theravada and Mahasangika and thereafter Mahayana and Hinayana and the fourth Buddhist council. We revise, revise the Buddhist councils also in that regard. Now, let's come to the architectural expression part of it. When we talk about architectural expression, there is one. First, stupa. Second, caves. Stupa are basically burial mounts as represented in the form of a monument. And caves, we have chaityas which are prayer halls and viharas which, which are basically dwelling places which we'll discuss. Now, I want to discuss the stupa with you properly. A straightforward question came in 2023 with regards to it, that what is the concept of stupa, what is the larger understanding of stupa in that sense. Now, let's discuss what is a stupa. Now, here is where I will start to slow down a little bit and I will try to give you as much knowledge as possible. The initial part was the context, the context being Buddhism rising, Buddha dying and the concept of Buddha's death manifesting itself in architectural expression, councils and the context in which Buddhism rose. That is a static portion, straightforward portion. Here, I want to really concentrate and tell you, see, the concept of stupa basically represents a burial mount. When you bury somebody, you basically create a mount and that mount is a concept which is not specific to Buddhism. And therefore, burial mounts are known since the Rig Vedic period itself, later Vedic period, very, very common. Now, the concept of a stupa, in that sense, is not specific to Buddhism. What I mean by that is, see, stupa word appears in the Vedic text also. The concept of a burial mount is there within Vedic Brahmanism also, in Jainism also. So, to represent death, represent death and a mount is not a concept which Buddhism came up with and therefore that is why that question which came in 2023, the first statement was incorrect because or rather correct which is that Buddhism did not come up with the original concept of a burial mount or stupa. The architectural expression may be unique to Buddhism, how they created the stupa. However, when it came to representation, when it came to the concept, the concept is not original. The concept is there previously also. And generally, it is there because of the fact that, because of the fact that the concept of burial mounts is common to all religions. So, to be very, very clear, the concept of stupa, the terminology called stupa, the, the original idea of representing somebody in the form of a burial mount is not specific to Buddhism. It is there everywhere and therefore, it is not an innovation by the Buddhists. Rather, it is something which they adopted or borrowed and then had a unique expression of it. This is the first thing, which is concept part. I hope I have established that properly, that the concept is not new. It is rather, rather the purpose which is quite interesting. Now, let's talk about the purpose. Now, on purpose, there has been a straightforward question in mains examination. What is the purpose of a stupa? Now, there are two basic purposes of a stupa. The first purpose is as a form of pilgrimage. 
see the earlier stupas or the initial stupas mostly within the anda and i'll give you the components of a stupa within the anda itself mostly initial stupas had a relic related to buddha which is that they put in certain things relic would mean an artifact or something or some object which buddha used in his lifetime and therefore they used to put it this is not a hollow sphere it is a solid sphere so they used to put it and then create an anda over it and therefore it becomes a holy site for buddhists it's a holy site for buddhists not new stupas don't have relics but it is presumed generically it is symbolic that a stupa has a relic inside it so therefore it represents buddha himself it represents buddha himself and therefore the concept of pilgrimage that if a buddhist is going to a stupa he is basically doing pilgrimage because he is going and touching and doing the parikrama of an object of a or monument which has something related to buddha it could be in the anda it could also be in the harmika which is basically the box over the the anda itself so the first is known to everybody they were very strategically placed they were placed on most trade routes and that would basically tell you why the second concept is there they were mostly placed on trade routes they are very very strategically placed they are a pilgrimage site they are a holy site for the buddhist generally now the second purpose is they see if you look at most of the tirthas or the concept of pilgrimage in hinduism they would be if you look at amarnath if you look at kedarnath if you look at a lot of these pilgrimages they are obscure lot vishnu devi that way is very obscure they are very difficult to do the process of reaching the tirth the process of reaching that temple itself is very very difficult the concept of stupa is the other way around which is that they are very strategically placed on major trade routes accessible to everybody and in front of everybody's eye and the reason for that is because the stupa when you look at the entry gate of a stupa which is called a torana it has it has a lot of jatak stories over it it has the stories of buddha his past births in that regard and basically telling the story of buddha telling the story of buddha and in that context in that context the second purpose of a stupa is much more important which is propagation it is like a signboard or an advertisement for buddhism so like you go on the highway you see a billboard for any form of ad the stupa on the strategically placed routes is also like that that okay there is a stupa there somebody goes there if you know who buddha is you will then pay homage if you don't know who buddha is then you see the different forms of representation on the torana you get to know about it if you are interested because on trade routes there will be traders traders are vaishyas and therefore there is a chance for them to prescribe to buddhism so the first first purpose of stupas was pilgrimage but the second purpose is much 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 more important which is propagation which is the idea that it is basically an ad it is basically an concept of representing the buddhist story so that there is a certain form of vaishya influence or vaishya prescription to buddhism because buddhism needs more and more followers and therefore trade as a vaishya as and therefore propagation aspect of stupa is very very important so what i have established i have established that the concept of stupa is not specific to buddhism it is not a new concept which buddhism being brought in it's not an original concept within buddhism and second i have established to you that it is a pilgrimage site but more than that it is a site for propagation it is a site for advertisement it is a site for telling the story of buddha to everybody who does not know so that they can prescribe to buddhism if they want to the very important point which you need to know and came in the examination also now that we know the purpose we know the concept we understand buddhism also let's talk about the components of a stupa this would be expected from you that you would make it in the examination gives you fetches you more marks so let's make a stupa now what are the basic components you see the first component of a stupa is the most important one which propagates everything which is called a torana this is an entry gate through which you enter into a stupa thereafter thereafter stupas are mostly enclosed in and if they survive 
enclosed in a larger boundary wall or a railing is there and this railing is called suchi suchi is basically each of the pillar which is used in the the railing and therefore the second component becomes the suchi or the railing or the boundary wall then comes the most important concept which is the base which is called a medhi medhi is the third component which is the base of a stupa then you have the most obvious one which is the anda thereafter you have a box over this anda which is called an harmika i will show you an image also then you have a certain component which is which is together called the chhatra and the yashti now this pillar is called the yashti and the things which are inside it or the umbrella like objects which comes in which are called the chhatras so if i zoom into this part if i zoom into this part it basically looks like this there is a one main central pillar which is called yashti and then you will have chhatras like this this basically is an aesthetic choice so as to give give a little bit of height to the stupa so that it can be seen from far away and the yashti and the chhatras are quite important component that way there is also there is also a certain stairs which goes you don't have to learn the name for that stairs go up to the to the anda and you can go around it which is basically called the pradakshin path the pradakshin patha or the pradakshin patha which is basically the people going around it as a form of parikrama now together 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and this 8 which is the pradakshin path are the most important components of a stupa now in the examination you have to make this and so that so that you can get a better representation and you can make it quickly in the examination you don't have a lot of time to make it so you make it in a very simple form you first make an hashtag link the hashtag like this thereafter you make a rectangle make an anda thereafter you make a box and then you add something like this and you make something this is your stupa for the examination within 30 seconds it can be made you don't have to be michelangelo or da vinci you just have to then um, torana suchi medhi anda harmika yashti chhatra and pradakshin path as the most important eight components in that sense this is how you make it quickly in the examination i will show you this through the upinder singh imagery also which is quite important that way that she has also added more components but i want to only show you the ones which matter i'll show you a live example that way it will make more sense see this is sachi stupa one of the most celebrated stupas in india so you can see this is basically a torana which you can see torana thereafter thereafter this is your suchi this is suchi red color i'll take this is suchi then then you can see this is the base on which the whole stupa is there this is medhi then this is the anda this is the harmika this is the chhatra and the central pillar is yashti over and above that you can see that there is a certain path around which you can go around the stupa in that regard and therefore that is your pradakshin path now the same way same way the chhatravali or chhatras yashti anda medhi railing suchi torana and this is the top down perspective of it so you can see the anda has a pradakshin path around which you can go around the stairs are called sopana but we don't have to remember that now i'll make it again as a form of revision to again remember it properly so so please remember this this has to be made in the examination purpose pilgrimage second propagation but very very important you make a pillar like this you have to make it in the examination more quickly so you don't have the time to do this but this is the torana there after the torana we will have a certain boundary wall around it with pillars on it and those pillars are basically called suchi but we call this whole structure itself as suchi itself then then you will have the medhi which is the most important base on which the whole stupa is made then you have the anda then you have the harmika once you have the harmika then you have the yashti yashti has three chhatras over it 
so as to give it height in that regard. Thereafter, you all water has called sopanna, but you don't have to remember it. It is the way you go up to the anda, and thereafter you can go around the stupa in that regard. And these are the basic components. I'll again mark it: torana, suchi, medhi, anda, armika, the chhatras, the yashti. And the Pradakshina Patha. And these are basically Pali and Prakrit words which are quite important in that regard. These are the basic components. In the examination, obviously, you cannot make it at this pace. You have to be done within 30 seconds to 40 seconds. For that, very simply, hashtag, connect the hashtag, rectangle, thereafter, anda box the antenna so that they, you can go up like this and your job is done very simply very straightforward this gives you a better visual understanding in the examination will fetch you more marks in that regard so stupa i think is clear to everybody and there are four very important stupas this is the most celebrated stupa which is sachi stupa it's a unesco World Heritage Site also, Sachi Stupa. They are the oldest made by Ashoka themselves. Very beautifully carved gates they have with the Jatak stories. This is called the Dhemek Stupa. This is at Sarnath. This represents the first sermon, which is the first teaching given by Buddha himself. And the first sermon at Sarnath is represented in a stupa, which defies the concept of a stupa itself because it has a cylindrical anda rather than a hemispherical one and therefore the mx stupa is unique that way represents the dharma chakra parivartana the moment when buddha got enlightenment and more than that it is the first sermon stupa commemorates that so you have to remember the mx sarnath and you have to remember sachi stupa thereafter there are two more stupas the other one is called the barut stupa written like this also barut stupa but barut stupa the problem is that the stupa itself does not survive. The stupa itself does not survive. Only the railings do. And in the railings, we find these type of figures. And these are very common figures within Hinduism also. And are actually appropriated from Hinduism into Buddhism, which is called the Yaksha and the Yakshini. This is a Yaksha Yakshi whole set. This is Yaksha alone. They were placed in front of the stupa itself. Why? Because they represent auspiciousness. Very, very important that way. Very important concept, the Yaksha Yakshi, the Mithun concept and the Yoga Yogi and the Naga Nagi are cults which are within Hinduism also and are within the concept of Buddhism also. Both intersect at that point. This is the most interesting stupa. This is called the Amravati stupa. Amravati stupa, actually this is a replica of it. It was the only stupa which was made out of marble and very ornate and very beautifully carved out. And therefore, therefore, this is an ornamental stupa, which does not survive because of obvious reasons, because people took off materials out of it, but it's a small replica of it that way. So in stupas, you have to remember these four for sure, which is the concept of Amravati, Bharut, Sachi, and Demek. We have understood the structure. We have understood the structure. We've also understood the purpose pilgrimage site and the concept of propagation we understood that it is not original to buddhism also we understood why the need for such things were also there now we can move to the second most important concept which is chaitya and vihara now chaitya vihara is a very interesting concept because because they were represented within the concept of caves cave architecture in which donative caves were given to Buddhists. The first donative caves were to Yajiviks, the whole Barabar and Nagarjuni hill complex. But Chaityas are basically the worship place. They are shrines. On the other hand, Viharas are residential complex or what we call as monasteries. Now, Think of it like this, that this is your school, this is your hostel, this is where you worship and thereafter this is where you go and sleep in the night. This is for monks. 
these are for moths now chaityas can be and these are the types of this is the earliest form of donative caves ever given this is the law machine gave the only ornated outside ornated or ornamental or decorated entry gate for a cave itself in the barabaran nagarjun hill complex itself from inside they look like this but for me a chaitya can be more important because there are multiple ways in which chaityas can be made it can be it can be by like this with a stupa in the end so i will give you the four sub categories of chaitya see chaityas can be made in different ways and that is linked to the different forms of buddhism also you could have a chaitya this is a sectional cross section of a chaitya in that regard that you enter from here and you are going and this is the worship hall the worship hall can be plain there could be nothing inside it there could be nothing inside it this is the early buddhist chaityas wherein the monks sit here and they worship and there is nothing here this is when basically the first buddhist council had met there was no split till second buddhist council we see this type of understanding wherein wherein there is an open hall in which everybody sits and does prayer this is the first type the second type the second type is quite interesting that way wherein you can have a chaitya you enter it like this within it you could have a small stone stupa now a small stone stupa in itself in itself is how they are basically representing buddha this is buddha being represented this again is before the third buddhist council that because there is no split therefore therefore there is just represent representation of buddha in the form of a stupa however it is the it is the third and fourth which is quite important third is when third is when you enter into a chaitya and you have a stupa you have a stupa but but with this stupa you also have you also have a certain image of buddha here you have a certain image of buddha here and this for all students who are very very receptive with regards to buddhism they would understand this is a specific mahayanic chaitya because within mahayana where bodhisattvas are very very important buddha was considered a god so therefore idol worship is very very common and more than that after the fourth buddhist council after the fourth buddhist council buddhist council we get the fourth type which is basically which is basically a chaitya chaitya with a stupa in the end but it is different because this one was from the first to third buddhist council when the split between hinayana and mahayana did not happen here this is a proper hinayana cave hinayana cave and there could be symbols of buddha through which he is being taught for basic understanding hinayana and mahayana hinayana is where buddha is a teacher he is represented through symbols no idol worship mahayana is bodhisattvas and the concept of buddha as god and the concept of deification of buddha and his idol worship in that regard so there are four types in which you can get a chaitya thereafter thereafter once we understand that chaitya is a prayer hall and i gave you an image of this that the monks would sit here and they would basically look at the stupa meditate it's a way of meditation it's a way of representation now now we can also have another concept which is called the vihara vihara is the residential complex and in a residential complex what basically happens is that you have rooms which have been made so that they can go and sleep into it now within viharas we have two types is a very interesting discussion within viharas we have two types viharas can be two types in the way that you could have a chaitya attached to the vihara and you could have a chaitya which has a vihara separate to it so basically this becomes a chaitya with a vihara and this is a chaitya without a vihara and vihara is somewhere else so in ajanta elora you will find certain caves in which chaitya vihara are attached to each other 
through a certain opening and there could also be a vihara which is not attached to a chaitya in that regard therefore making it a unique establishment where the chaitya cave is different vihara cave is different in that sense so in this past half an hour what i've done with you basically is i have summarized the buddhist architecture in the form of stupa chaitya vihara what i want to do here is before i end the session itself what i want to do here is i want to summarize everything for you in a proper sense in that regard so when we talk about stupas stupas have two purposes which is pilgrimage and propagation it is not a concept specific to buddhism and therefore therefore the basic structure is a torana with a suchi along with that a medhi an anda a harmika and thereafter a yashti and a chhatra and you can go up to it thereafter we discussed two other manifestations again chaityas are specific to buddhism viharas are not specific to buddhism viharas you can find for jains also and hinduistic caves also have viharas chaityas can as i told you be of four types first type is only hall thereafter second can be pre fourth buddhist council hall in which you have a stupa and thereafter you could have the third type in which you have the stupa plus the image and thereafter you could also have the stupa made after the fourth buddhist council after fourth buddhist council on the other hand viharas can be of two types either attached or not attached and very simply very simply if you know what is attached and non attached as i told you that the chaitya is linked to the vihara or the vihara and chaitya are different then our basic purpose of this discussion is done to give you the basic recap of everything buddhism rose out of the frustration of the vaishya and the kshatriya community within the vedic brahmanistic fold in which they were getting more and more frustrated by the varna system itself second the materialism and the moral corruption of 6th century bc second i have discussed with you that stupas after the death of buddha were the architectural expressions of buddhist thought and buddhist religion the buddhist councils were the way of codification of buddhism and the architectural expressions were buddha in the form of stupa stupa pilgrimage and propagation because very strategically placed on trade routes second is the concept of stupa components you have torana medhi so uh, the concept of sopana suchi the harmika the yashta ji and the and the chhatras along with along with the concept of a pardakshin then chaityas are worship halls where basically the, they are places where the monks sit and basically meditate and follow the ashtang marg the eight fold path and the viharas are where they sleep and donative caves were quite common in the modern in the post modern period in that regard so with this i would like to end the session thank you so much for your patience i hope that you have gained through these five sessions about history we'll keep on adding more and more topics into our past journey but for now this is our last session Thank you so much. I will see you. Take care. Bye bye.